in the name of Jesus we pray. Holy Ghost, I ask that you give us utterance today. And that when we speak, we speak in the counsels of God, empowered by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And I, I, I come against every destruction of the enemy. And I said their hearts are broken in the name of Jesus. And then foundational influences from foundations, even foundations and altars, their hearts are broken in the name of Jesus. And then they receive the power to receive the word of God and make use of those words and practice them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. It's a family week. And please, we're going, what we are going to do now will both touch the fathers, the mothers, and the children. So I want everybody to please give your best attention today. I want to talk about a topic that I tried to building a godly family in a corrupt world. Building a godly family in a corrupt world. Whether you like it or not, we have found ourselves in a world that has been polluted. A world where those who serve God unfortunately have become the endangered species. A world where those who do the right thing are mocked. A world where children who are trained after God are seen as people who are useless. A world where if you do not play according to their tone, they look at you as you as being unsocial. But we have no choice but one. And the one choice we have is to stand in the word of righteousness that has our salvation intact. Those who have been lost, who have missed the way, they are the one mocking those who are on the right track. And so, if you are building your family, you must know exactly by what pattern you are building your family. If the society is bad today, it's because from the family, we have already started having corruption. So from the single unit of the family, we begin to have corruption. And this corruption from the family unit is what, you know, uh, uh, moves to the society at large. And so if we want to correct the, de uh, I mean the decadence in society, we must start from correcting it right from the house, right from the home. If not, we will not be able to succeed if we don't start from home. Now, let me tell you the view of Jesus Christ about this world. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 17, let me see the view that Jesus, when he came, the Son of God, when he came, and he saw the world, what was his view and what was his conclusion about the state of the world? Is somebody there, if you are there, you can quickly read for us. Matthew 17. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Jesus answered, How long you live and wrong you people are? How long must I stay with you? How long must I have to speak up with you? Bring the word here to me. Jesus gave Hallelujah. I want you to let's look, let's quickly look at uh, okay, let's add let's add Philippians chapter 2, verse 15 and 17. 
Philippians 2 verse 16 and 17. Okay, now let's see, before we go to Philippians uh, 2, 15 and 17, let me see something on that verse 17 of Matthew chapter 17. It said, all faithless and perverse generation. That is the word that I want to bring out from what Jesus said. Perverse generation, faithless generation. And when we talk about perverseness, we are talking about, you know, uh, corrupting a system. That is distorting a normal process. In other words, perverse means to change what used to be white and then you change it to black. Perverse means to come and stop the things that are supposed to go in a particular direction. So the Bible says in Jesus' view, this word is a perverse word and is a faithless generation. Let's look at the view that Peter, I mean, a poor heart about this word. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15 and 17. Yes. 15 to 17. Okay. All right, I'll be done. Uh, he said that you live your life in a crooked and perverse. And, and uh, like I said, what you have about to say, if anything is crook, crooked, it means that it is being distorted. In other words, the normal process is being stopped and a corrupt process, you know, put into what is normal. In other words, it's like you are processing something. Let's say you are cooking a meal. And then somebody comes in and pour an acid inside it. The normal process has been distorted. So the outcome of this particular you know, combination now will be dangerous. And so the world in the eyes of Paul also is crooked and then is perverse. Let's look at Peter's view about this world. In Acts chapter 2 verse 40. Acts chapter 2. Let's look at another perspective that Peter had about the world. As to verse 40 quickly, a fast reader. Hallelujah. Peter said he looked at the word and he said this word is an untoward generation. Untoward generation. And the emphasis of being untoward means it's a world that does not have a face. A world that does not have a face. Today they are here. Tomorrow they are there. Today they say this is what they believe in. Tomorrow they say this is what they believe in. Today they say this is what is wearing. Tomorrow they change it. So it's an untoward generation. Now, look at the perspective of these three anointed vessels. People who had the eyes of God Jesus Christ, the Savior, he looked at the world and he said, this is a perverse world. And then Paul also looked at the world and said, this is a crooked world. And Peter looked at the world and he said, it's an untoward generation. Now, with the views that these people that have the Spirit of God, they have presented, it is not even by mistake anymore to observe the things that we are seeing in our generation today. The things that you are seeing, the error and the corruption you are seeing in society today is actually something that has been there because they have seen it right from the time and they knew that there is a direction the world is going that is very dangerous. And so anybody who wants to live 
and for you, the mandated God must be somebody who deliberately decide to build his or her family according to the pattern of the Almighty. God is the one who created the heaven and the earth. And so if, if he is actually the one who best fit to tell us how to live in the world he created. Every product from any factory has a leaflet attached to the product that tells you how best to use that product. And they will guide you and tell you what is do. They will guide you by the leaflet or what is called the manual. Hallelujah. Now, if God is the one that created this world, he is actually the right personality that can tell us how to live here and live in safety. Any other advice, any other counsel from any other quarter is an error because it can never bring out the best that is in the heart of the creator. He that creates must examine the input he has made into that product and he can best tell you how best the product can function. But we have found a society whereby the one who creates refuse to be sought after and men seek other things in order to bring perspective to this life. That's why we are having this hell of confusion that will never go out until the world ends. It was man's choice never to seek the face of God and get the blueprint of creation and work in that blueprint that is the error that we are finding out today. God came and he said, Adam, among all the trees I put before you, I want you to eat everything, but except the one that is in the middle. And then an evil voice came. The enemy came and he said, you, what did God tell you to do? And they told God, I mean they told the devil, he told the devil, this is what the Lord said we should do. This is the blueprint to have safety. This is the blueprint to have security. This is the blueprint to have you know, peace. And Satan said, no, that that's not the way to go. And he said, this is rather what to do. And from the moment they yielded and sought counsel from the enemy, that was the beginning of the crisis that has never left the world. That was the first point we missed it. That was the first point men began to derail. That was the first point our body naturally began to die. That was the first point that men got to a point they are confused and do not know what to do. Because the moment Adam and Eve, they sinned against God, they began to war. They began to war. So when you look at the right place that is on the earth today, it's because men left the ways of God and they sought their own ways and so they are running from pillar to post. And so if I want to build a family here, in this kind of world, in this kind of generation, if I want to build a family, I must go back to the blueprint that the Lord left for us. And that is the only way to get it. If anybody tells you that you can have 10 ways to success without any reference to the word of God, that is still not correct. Because at the end of it all, it will still leave you in pain. And that's why the celebrities we have today, they can't build a family. They are married today, and after some years, they are broken. Their families, one thing or the other is wrong. It is not that they are not learned in the knowledge of this world system, but because the world system has no capacity to sustain to the end, they have to break down. How many persons are, are, are carrying out suicide today? Many of those who carry out suicide, they have money. Many of the families where they are wars and they are fighting, they have money. But because they do not build according to the word of God, that cannot last. So whoever wants to build a good family, where there is peace, where there is health, where there is long life, you must build according to the blueprint that the Lord left before us. I want you to look at what the emphasis that God gave to Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, 17 to 19. Let's look at actually be available to do the right thing. 
And so God met a man called Abraham. And that man he met called Abraham demonstrated faith and brought what was to come several years after. Manifested that reality in his time. And now we are partakers of the pattern of Abraham. Because by faith, it was credited to him to righteousness. And right now, we are the who is reading for us. Lord said, Shall I have from Abraham that which I do? You shall become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Listen to that word. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. But when we look at how the nations of the earth shall be blessed. I know him that he will command his children. And his household after him. And they shall keep the word of the Lord. And they will do justice and they will do judgment. And the Lord will bring upon Abraham the promises he has gave, given to Abraham. It's the Bible says that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And the reason is that Abraham will surely command his children after the Lord. And not just commanding his children after the Lord, Abraham will ensure the continuity of the word of God in the life of the children, and by extension, the children will extend it to others. Please, is she sleeping? Sit properly. His promises to Abraham. So anybody who wants to build a family that is blessed of God must be someone who goes back to the word of god and build according to the word of god look at the roles that we have today look at the kind of problems we have in families today go and check very well those children are not raised after the lord and there's not two way about it it's like making a, 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 a choice. And when you make a choice, you can't control the end. If you make a choice, the choice has a, an end. So when you have started on that path, you are sure that that is the end you are going to meet. And so it begins with, I want to build my house. And then I am making a decision that I will build it according to the pattern of the word of God. And if there is anything different from that pattern, I will not be part of it. Praise the Lord. Now, that is for Abraham, what the Lord said. And God said, I trust Abraham. How many of us parents can God beat his chest and say, I trust my son, I trust my daughter, that they will raise their children in the fear of the Lord. I weep. There's a family that the young ones started coming to church. And one of the days I was in the church here and I was not happy that these children, they used to come. And I told myself I was going to go to that house from the church. I mean, right where the church was going on. And when I got to that house, I think that day I happened to meet their mother. And she was cooking. And I said... What, 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 is it not possible for you to just tidy up these things then you just come join us in, in the church and she said Kai, she's very busy and that when she's done uh, the sister had a child and she would have to go for that you know to look after her sister and you know I observed that while I was coming they saw me and they began to run to hide now this is a family that is raising children for the society. So will it be surprising if tomorrow you see a bunch of prostitutes being raised? Who 
who have no recourse to the word of God, who have no, no interest in anything about God. Because right from the foundation, they are not raised to go that way. Praise the Lord. And why you cannot help it is that you are training your own children to go after the way of the Lord, but there are people who are definitely training their children to go after the world of loveliness. And all of them will meet in the school. All of them will meet in the university. All of them will meet in the higher institutions, in the secondary school. And those who come there, some came to initiate other people into competition because that's the foundation they have raised them. And so if you do not also raise your own children, they have to carry the father of the Holy Ghost. If they go to those places, they can survive these straight grounds. Where well, nobody will tell you, have you done devotions this morning? Where well, nobody will remind you if you ever pray. And that's why it's, at times I, I have to, I begin to see, is it even okay for me to send my daughter to the boarding house at this age? At this age? Because you wouldn't know how much of God they will allow and they will open for them when they go to those schools. So, can I do a bit of training to a particular age? And I said, okay, you can go. Because we must check. It's not that everybody is sending their children to the boarding school and then you have not been able to check your own. Have I put enough capacity at this age to withstand the pressure that is in the open society? Because there are young people at the very tender age that are sending to the boarding house and they become gay. The reason is that they have not had enough of the word of God that will be able to withstand the pressures that are out there. And so, the child you send in prays in the morning and prays in the evening and you study the Bible, but at the end of the time, the child that comes back to you does not like the Bible. Does not like praying. What has happened? The society has been able to corrupt his mind or her mind. And so if you want to build a godly family, you must do definitely ways to impute into them the word of God on a very determined way for you to be able to survive the pressures that are out there. Hallelujah. You can imagine a world where parents are back at home and they are in the house and they send their children to church and they are back at home. What kind of system is that? God is going to ask every parent to give an account of, over their children. You must give account of the children that you have. It's not just having children. It's to have children that you can take care of. God gives children. But God gives you the, the wisdom to know how far and how many of the children you can handle. You are such a person that is so busy in and out, in and out, and you have been able to give birth to almost nine children on the go, and you are not on the ground to train them. And you leave them in the hand and say, okay, I think they are going to church now. So he said, no. No. What they do in the church is to, is to teach them, you know, and in a very short time, to teach them the counsel of the Lord, that who ingrained this counsel into their, into their body, into their blood, is you that is the mother and is the father. As a parent, if your child comes to the house of God and goes back, asks them questions, what have they learned? And then observe to see whether they are actually doing or practicing what they have learned in the house of God. So the, the man, the father of the house, is the pastor of the house. Whether you went to uh, theological school or not, the father of the house is the pastor of the house. The mother of the house is the assistant pastor. Hallelujah. You must carry your children through a prayer process. You must look at you praying. You must look at you praying. And then they must also observe you not reading the Bible. And they are learning. If you go to so many 
homes. Their parents, what the best they can do is to ask, did you read your Bible today? And the child say, I, I read, or I didn't read, that's all. Some parents will not even ask. Did you pray? Some parents will not even ask. And these children are raised to face the, the, the enormous pressure that Satan has already, you know, already put in place, waiting to devour. And that's the society that they are being sent into. No wonder. Many of them don't come and they, come, they don't survive. All the children they are hearing of, even in secondary school, they have, they, they have learned the terms of cult. They have learned the language of cultism. And they are practicing gay right from there. Right from there. Jesus said, he said the man went to plant seeds, good seeds. And then when he went back, the enemy came and sowed tars, so thorns, tars, all, all over, all over, all over. Did you know the implication of that to the reason of children? If you have the good seeds, remains the word of God. That you must sow in other words, before your child ever hear of a bad word outside, you have already prepared your child with the word of God, so that when they hear the bad word, they know this is a bad word. And they can't identify with it. The way no seed was laid, by the time they got to society, anything they tell them, they take it. Because he didn't put any good seed on the ground. So as a father and as a mother, your responsibility is to sow the good seed. Jesus did not say that there will be a bad seed sown. We have no guarantee. As far as this life is concerned, there must be the showing of bad seed. But one of the things that you must do as a child of God is to lay the foundation of the good seed first. First. And you know what Jesus said? He said, this thing, if you go to begin to remove now, you will cause a lot of damages. So what do we do? What do we do? He said, leave them. Leave them. And that's why we can't stop the corruption that is on the earth. You can't stop it. Immorality upon immorality will continue to grow. Different versions will continue to come out. Because Jesus said, we should let them. At the end, we can separate the bad from the good. And so as a family, what do you do? What you do is simple. You will have to monitor. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, it said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is grown, he will not depart from that way. So the first responsibility for anybody who will survive the judgment of God as a parent is to train. Don't go and marry. If you have not decided that you are going to train your children in the way of the Lord. Don't go and marry. The fancy and the fanfare that we see in the society, that young people desire to, to have intimacy just because of the place of intimacy and then bringing for children that were never planned for and then children that we will be cared for is a dangerous, you know, a, a certain. And the anger of God is waiting for those who will violate his instruction. So anybody who does not want to follow the way of God is not qualified to undergo or undergo this, you know, a, a procreation. Procreation is a subject for those who are ready to follow after the pattern of God. But when the devil sees that, he began to raise a generation that is running parallel to that of the saints. And so they are raising their own people with minds to poison the work of God. And so as a parent, it is now in our duty to continue to plant in and monitor the word of God in the life of your child. Parents will be held responsible for the error that their children go through. Parents will be held responsible. 
Because if at 18, a child leaves your house and go to their own house, or maybe marriage or whatever, or, or 20, 24, or all, all of that, the question is that what was the foundation that was laid in the life of that child before you are dispatching the child to the larger society? What foundation did you lay? Hallelujah. Nobody should sleep. Nobody should sleep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Touch him for me. Shouldn't be sleeping. That's error. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get yourself in a mood where you shouldn't sleep. You shouldn't sleep. Let me let you know something. If what an adult should do, or may do because of age, younger people begin to do, it's to show you that the society is already corrupt. Hallelujah. Children should not come to church and sleep. Adults may sleep, perhaps, by the time they are overtaken with so much, you know, uh, uh, work and all of that, they can go up a little bit. But young people should do it. The Bible said that the young will find. You think that it's just a word, a statement of scripture? No. It's because of the pressure that will come from the world. A time will come, the young people will lack energy to be able to withstand the word of God. Praise the Lord. So what do we do as parents? Train up your children. Train up your children. When you say train up your children in the way of the Lord, it looks like it's a very big word. But what it involves is this. Be at the gate of the heart of your children to tell what should enter and to tell what should not enter. The first thing you will do is that when you observe what you then take in every day, one of the first things a parent must do is that the child must not leave the house except after the word of God has been planted that morning before they go out. The word of God must be planted in the heart of your child before they ever leave the house. So parents that run out in the morning very early, they say they are very busy, so they are run out and they are going to work and then they come back late in the night. You are doing a lot of disservice to yourself because at best you are raised children who are whose life is not patterned after the ways of God. God knows that you have job to do, but it's so it's so it's so uh, it's it's so unfortunate that the system that detects to you the kind of job you are doing, and you have to rush out very early in the morning and come back late in the night. That system is not of God; it's rather a Babylonian system. Where they take work more than anything, they take their work more than any time for God. Where God is not a factor in their calculation. And they have come to teach you that way. And you are practicing that way. If your husband goes out very early, and you too now also do the business that goes out very early, let one of you stop the work. Let one of you resign for the sake of raising godly seeds. It will cost you to raise godly seeds. It will cost you. It will cost you. Parents, it will cost you to raise the godly seeds. Do you know what it takes to raise an animal? A male animal. You know what it takes if you want to raise your animal to be, to be good looking. Not to talk about human beings. You want to raise human beings, you will give your full attention to raise human beings. So we are in a house where the father is very busy. Very, very busy. The mother should not be very, very busy. Also, for the work outside. The mother should rather be very, very busy for the work inside. Because raising of children is a work. Please tell somebody by your side. Say raising of children is work. I had a story of, of a young boy whom they wanted to kill. I have just a few minutes. A young boy that was already at the death squad. And he said he wanted to talk to the mother. And they should call the mother to him. And they called the mother to him. And he said he wanted to just talk you know, to the mother just alone. 
And while the mother brought ear like this, he used his mouth and beat the ear. And what was he saying? He said that what he should have taught me when I was young, he didn't teach me. That's why I'm ending up like this. What example are you giving to your children? What example are you giving to your children? People just thought that the reason of children is just have children, just have them, and then the only thing you need to do is to make sure that they have money for their school fees, let's see, so long as they are not hungry. Let me let you know something. The devil is even smarter than that. You are working that your children doesn't go hungry. But are you, are you not are you, are you working anything to make sure that their mind can be rich in the word of God? So they are not hungry, their stomach is filled. But at the same time, their mind is empty of the word of God. They are deeply hungry spiritually. But physically, you are fed them with food. That's why they still go out and they still become, you know, they still do rubbish and they still do nonsense on the streets and they, they, are, they bring shame back to the house. Is it not children of those who have money? Children of those who have money who are wearing an old rotten going naked on the campuses that the lecturer that should talk to them how higher they see the lecturer as somebody who is poor so why can the lecturer talk to them you think that the girls that are walking with pants on the street to the market the other day in the market i saw one the pant was to be worn inside the pant and was walking on the busy market day in Bwari. And you know what doesn't feel? She doesn't feel anything. It's because she has stayed in that rottenness for a very long time. That she's, her conscience is dead. Everything about sensitivity is dead. And so as she's walking, she does not feel anything. But for someone who is alive, your conscience will trouble you. And say this is not good. This is not acceptable. Do you know that if you stay longer in the toilet, you will no longer know that that environment has an awful odor because you have stayed too long in that place. Do you understand that? And that's exactly what we're saying today. That a lot of people have stayed in this corruption for too long that they do not know. They told what they are doing is the best. It's the best. Don't do it. They already decayed. Already decayed. So you must make it definite to make sure before your children leave the house, deposit the word of God. I asked a man, I said, Do you do devotion? He said, No, he said, My work, I go early. I go early. I leave them. No wonder. When I look at his children and I look at what is happening in his house, I am not surprised. I am not surprised. The man must take responsibility. And then you are coming back at night. What are you doing? What are you doing to ensure that whatever you didn't do in the morning, you are able to do it before they go to bed. And yet even in the night, you still come back late. That kind of attitude is planning to fail as a parent and planning for your children also to fail. And one of the things that makes me cry is that when you are doing all of this training for your children, somebody is also training his own children to become wayward people on the streets. And then tomorrow a young man will come with sad, you know, trouser and say he wants to marry your daughter. Someone who has never known the way of the, of the word of God, someone who has never known the Bible, and then your daughter has the God to bring that kind of person and say, this is the person I want to marry. That daughter must be crazy. And as a parent, you must know how to have the final say. You tell us that we should not involve uh, I mean, if your, if your child says this is what I want, you should allow them because in this society now, they are grown now. Rubbish! Which system? Are you following? You are following the corrupt system. And so they are of age, let them decide anything they want to do these days. Don't tell them what to do. If you have the spirit of God, you can tell your child this is the way to go. At what age was Moses when God sent him and said, go and deliver the people? Was Moses too, too big at age 80? And God said, go! Go! At what age was Moses when the father-in-law Jethro 
advised him and counseled him and said the way you are talking you are administering to these people you will need to do change it before you will die on time and Moses hidden and said yes that's correct and he changed the pattern and you know God was also in support of what the, the father-in-law said so at what age will your, your child become too grown that you cannot counsel and advise if your child bring a, a man, a rascal, to be married to, you become the father in law of a rascal. Say no! Let the child decide against your wish. But so long as you know that's a dangerous part, don't give your support. At the end of the day, you will give account for supporting her to go to, to, to a house of evil. So let's, let's leave them, they have age, they have gone to school, as somebody who is a degree, degree holder for what? And learned in what system? A Babylonian system? A warmly system? Let me let you know something. The original creation and the blueprint of creation is that people should be taught the word of God. The word of God has prosperity. The word of God has engineers. Let me let you know. How many engineers have they raised that can construct a structure that they built in during the trouble of that man? In Genesis 11, who is the great engineer? Can try it and go to that level. The level they went, no structure on the earth has reached that level. If any structure get to that level on the earth, the same thing that God did, He will do. That structure, thunder will bring it down. That is to tell you that they went beyond the kind of imagination they had. The kind of wisdom and the grace of God they had, they could put up structures upon structures upon structures upon structures, the heights that shook heaven. And they said, We must do something. If we don't, these people can get to where they shouldn't get to at all. Which engineer? Which school did they go to? You throw your internet open to your children. I say, no, you want them to be her bad standard. A bad standard, are they being a blessing? Are they, are they a blessing? I say, are they a, 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 a yardstick for us? Is her dad a yardstick for us? They are never. If those world, those people in that world, they are an example for us, how far have they gone? Is it not there are places that children can carry God and go to a school and kill children and kill adults at the same time? What example have they shown us? They are not the people we should imitate. We should imitate a nation that follows after righteousness. Not a nation that have devised systems that is contrary to the systems of the Almighty. America has in God we trust. But then we have a generation that rose and said, even praying publicly is not allowed. And there are some states where you don't have to pray in the school or bring the Bible out and to talk to people from the love of God. Why? Yeah, we have decay. How did they come? How did they get to that level? So they can't be a, a, the path of the people who should imitate. So all the degrees that they made you spend several years in school, and at the end of it all, you struggle to even get a job. And when you get a job, hypertension will even want to kill you. So is that the way of God? What God wants is that he wants us to be knowledgeable in the word of God because in it is life. In it is life. Hallelujah. Okay, if you are talking of sheep, if you are talking of sheep, during the time of Paul, the sheep that carried them from Jerusalem to uh, where, where, where? In Egypt. Is it in Egypt? Where, where, was, where was the emperor? Where Paul was kept? In, in Rome. In Rome. The ship that carried them. Who built the ship? Which education? Which university was in existence that, built the, that helped them build the ship? Follow the way of God. Follow the way of God. You can become that which God ordained for you. And please don't struggle to become what the world wants you to be. Rather struggle to become what God wants you to be. The problem we're having today is that men are being built to become what the world wants them to be. And so we have a society that is full of corruption, wickedness. Go to Mexico. Look at the way courts 
no ruin the whole of Mexico. And that's the society that you are struggling to send your children to enter. Say, I want my children to go to abroad. And you are cutting corners every day because you want to sleep in with men who can make way for your children to go to abroad. Stealing public money because you want to raise etiquette. Stealing public money because you also want to feel that your child is going to school in Harvard. And you are stealing public money, the money they gave you to use to construct work for innocent people. You thought you thought the same money, put out the all, all these things together because of your selfish reason. No wonder the child will go there and say, he will begin to smoke ganja. And if you call him and say, Daddy, how are you? I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. When you begin to hear, I want to, I want to, you should be careful. Something is going on. After how many years and so much money spent, and that child comes out, either they bubble that child back home as someone who is a nuisance to the society. Finally, know that. If your children fail as parents, especially before they leave your house, it is you that failed. If your children, everybody who has a child, your daughter becomes pregnant in your house, that is a clear sign that you failed. In your house, you failed. Hallelujah. And parents, please know God will ask you to give account of how you train your children. And training of children will cost you money, it will cost you time, it will cost you energy. It will not be easy to raise children except you put the totality of your time and your energy to it. Why did God say a man should not stay alone or be alone and a wife came? It is not for the two of them to be running her task and looking for money to raise the children. Mm -mm. It is for it to be that if one is now doing this to raise to get money, the other should do something that can give her so much time for the children to be raised. Listen, listen. The world tells us that we do not need all of this time, spending time with your children. No, 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 no. That's the world pattern. But for us as children of God, you have to spend time with your children. Do Bible study with them yourself. Yourself. Don't leave it for the pastor in the church. Do Bible study with your children yourself. Pray with your children yourself. So what do you do? The first thing is that I say consciously train your children. Let them not go out of the house before, I mean, they, they receive the word of God before they go out of the house. And then when they come back, you also check what they have in the bin. And do not send your children to a place far from you, except you have been able to give them enough capacity spiritually before you send them there. So especially in secondary school, at that a check has my child gotten enough of the word of God that he can stay for how many months away? You must check and be sure. If you know it's not adequate, don't send the child to a boarding school. It's not a crime. It's not an error. That the child must, must go to a boarding school, and if not, that's an error. No. No. If you must do anything for the child to stay, so that you can teach that child first of all culture and the knowledge of the word of God before you can send them, better stay. Praise the Lord. The second thing you will do is that you watch over what they do. You monitor them. Monitoring is very important in training. And when you monitor people, you will deliberately, first of all, in monitoring, you must block every avenue where evil seeds can come from. The reason why the man that went to sow seeds, in, it was in the night. And it was when men were sleeping. But under this context is that you should be awake. As a father, as a mother, and when you are awake, you can now know that this thing is not good, this one is not good, this one cannot come to my house, this one cannot come to my house. 
Check the children that your, your children play with. Check those who come to your house. If my children play with any kind of children that I don't like their attitude and their, the way they are not well trained, I will stop them. It is my duty and my wife knows, my wife knows that if I see anything among the children and it's not good, I will rebuke them immediately. And I said, this, this one should not come here. Simple. If you are not definite, if God is asking you to give account, are you going to say, because so, I, I'm afraid, I am I'm shy that if I do not, they say, oh, you, you, your child, your child. Please, it is your child. And if God is going to ask you, you will not ask you for another person's child. He will be asking for your own child. How you did? How did you bring that child up? So watch what they wait, uh, I mean they watch. One common error. Go to the movies that they show on the open air televisions. Those movies, do you check them? Do you check? If you go to some homes, they keep television from morning to night. Hey, what a decay. What a decay. Television runs from morning to night. And children are watching. And you know what? Even though they were, they, they are telling us that they are putting a check. They write some movies, they will go through the uh, copyright or, or scrutiny, they will put 13. Which means that children that are 13 years and above can watch. The one they put 18, you see children that are 8 years, 9 years, watching movies that people whose mind and emotions have been built for 18 years and above should watch. Children of 8 years, they are watching it. And you think that that society will come out as a sink society? It will come out as a mad society. That's why you see children, children of how many years? They are talking about sex. They are talking about things that they will be sure. The reason is that their parents never stood at the gate of their heart by blocking the things that they watch. And you know one funny thing, which is very dangerous. Some parents in the name of being busy and they don't want their children to to be moving here and there. They open the television for them to watch DSTV from morning to night. And you think that your child is safe, not knowing that as you're coming back, you are going to come back and see a wizard. A wizard. Somebody who has been centrally initiated from the movie they are watching. So you must choose. Even though the television, even though the subscription gives you channel, is it not even demonic? Is it not demonic for you to come and subscribe for something and they give you 600 channels? They want to kill you. They want to die. I don't know how to open my heart to talk. But I must talk. What are you doing? Is it that they want you to become an imbecile? To always sit and be watching television. And some people, because of greed, they say, ah. Your family, we will watch or since this, all the other one season thing. Your family will continue the rest. So your house is a house of sin because you want to finish the subscription. You don't want to lose anyone. By the time, by the time you people come to the reality of life, you discover that your your, your boy is a gay. The woman also lesbian. The, the your, your 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 husband is sleeping with all the women in the neighborhood. Where did they learn it from? It is the DSTV and the subscription you have made that have been able to equip everybody like that. And everybody is equipped, equipped, equipped for the word of evil. Is it a crime? Subscribe the one that you can, and then mark the one that you go shooting or close it. Use, use pin and lock it and give them the one they should watch. Do you know what? It's even better for you to go and buy download movies, specific movies, selected movies, and bring for children to watch, than to open DSTV and open TSTV and open all of this for them to be checking channel. You come to us, children are struggling to change channel. Stop leaving children, struggling to change channel. No wonder, no wonder they grow up and some of them, even though they start and there's, there's manual match, they will choose to go for manual match instead of coming for service and crusade. What is the reason? Because you train them when they were small with man you. So how do you want them to change now? We don't know. We watch the gate. Watch what they've left. Watch what they, they, they listen to. And then what, what are they saying? What did I hear you say? There was a guy came to the house and my, my I don't know who came to me. Uh, is he Ima or, 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 or okay, Eunice came to me and said, Ima said that uh, 
that if, 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 if you if you are talking to the junior one, that's a mutual now. That if he does, if he use uh, something and cut his neck, I said, What? That is a very strange word. It was a shock, it ran through my spine. I didn't know when I carried even hand to do the punishment because it was too big for me. And then I sat down, I asked, How and where could that language enter from? Because I know I didn't use it, and I am very sure the mother would not show you it. So, where did this come from? And then I said, Okay, could it be the movies that they are watching? Even though cartoon, they say, but there are too much violence in those cartoons that these children also have been able to learn. You see, this world they are wise in their own way. You say you love cartoon, and cartoon is not dangerous. So, they devise for you what you want, and inside. They put the hooks that will hook your neck and the neck of your children. So even when this cartoon, maybe they have been able to fill it with so much poisons that when you come to a house, you see to them, Ikea, 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 Ikea. Why you begin to see like that? You know that they have gone beyond cartoon. What they got is beyond cartoon. They got another thing. In other words, they caught a spirit. So the spirit behind that creation, they caught it. And that's why you see them, they will just go climb one, one, thirty, and then they will jump. If you are, what we are telling you is that they caught the spirit of the cartoon. You think that they caught, they just watch children playing, small, small thing playing, but no, they caught the spirit of cartoon, which is violent. Let everybody know this corruption of the society. We start from the, 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 the family, and these are the areas we have led the society to control us from. Our government will write and write on the cigarette packet and says, uh, The Minister of Health knows that tobacco smoking is dangerous to your head, and those who smoke are liable to die young, and they need to leave you there. And they let the, uh, the company to keep producing. What are they telling you? What are they telling you? They are telling you that even though, even though we are supposed to be a watch for all of you, but you see, at this point, we are also helpless. We also need help. So you take the decision for yourself. Are you hearing now? They say you take the decision. What are they, are they telling you? Go back to what they taught you from your home before then you can take a decision. That's what they are telling you. Because as a young man, they say, okay, take a decision for yourself. You buy a packet of cigarettes, you just read it, and then you continue to smoke. Why are they telling you? They want to take the decision. And how can they take a decision? Tune up a child the way he should go. And when he, when he is grown, he will not depart from the way when he is grown. So when you do the training, they will be able to know what to do. If they see a pack of cigarettes, they say, no, we never saw this in our family, so we cannot be part of it.